Thank you, Alex. Let's talk about the economy and specifically jobs. Economists expected 500,000 jobs created in the month of September. Instead, the numbers came in well short of that number, just 194,000 jobs created. Yeah, that's right. The unemployment rate, however, did tick down to 4.8%. So let's dive deeper now into the report with Secretary of Labor Marty Walsh. Secretary Walsh, thanks so much for being with us this morning. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So we understand that the U.S. economy added 194,000 jobs in September, uh, which is actually worse than what we saw in August when I think that the economy added about 235,000 jobs. So what is going on here? Well, I, I think I mean, the, what's definitely going on is we, we, we have a pandemic that we're dealing with in this country, in this world. Uh, when you look at the, the, the job growth, we, we've never had an opportunity. There's never been a time in history that we can compare what we're going through right now um, because last time we were dealing with a pandemic in this country was 100 years ago. In saying that, uh, since President Biden has taken office and laid out an economic plan, we've added nearly 5 million jobs to the economy. The last three months, we've averaged about 500,000, over 500,000 jobs. Uh, there's some bright spots. This report is, is very, uh, you know, very uh, confusing in the sense of we saw some growth in manufacturing and retail. Uh, we saw some growth in hospitality, but not quite what we expected to see. There's a direct correlation with hospitality in tourism and restaurants to the, pan the, the uptick in the Delta variant. And then one area that I think a lot of people expected to see better numbers was in public education uh, because of school starting. And, and most of the country now is in-person learning. Uh, and we didn't see the growth there that was expected. And these are like school bus drivers and teachers aides and teachers and support staff. Uh, so that's certainly uh, concerning uh, that, that we didn't see the numbers there. So uh, again, I think, and, and then on top of all that, I think a lot of people are rethinking their work-life balance and they're rethinking their careers so uh, we have work to do there's no question about it but I, I would say that the report uh, I wouldn't describe it as a as a you know de depressing report but it clearly shows us there's more work to do yeah specifically I, I want to get back to the public sector and you mentioned the education jobs not just uh, failing to show growth but uh, local education jobs fell 144,000 in the month of September can you explain why well, I mean, if I was in my old role, I'd be able to tell you exactly why is Mayor of Boston. And I, I haven't had a conversation with the city of Boston or, or with cities, but it's, a, it's something I plan on talking to mayors now around the country to, to see kind of what's happening in that space. I think, you know, just w without putting any thought behind it, uh, you know, I think that you have children in schools that aren't vaccinated yet. You have people that work in those buildings that are afraid about their health. So I think that having vaccines will change that. Uh, and also getting more and more people vaccinated will, will, will continue. If you look at the areas in our country where we have high, vac high vaccination rates, we see high participation in the workforce. So there's, no, there's a direct correlation there. So we just need to continue to get people vaccinated. And people that don't want to get vaccinated, we're going to have to have a really robust, aggressive testing process so that we know that we can control. And what that does, quite honestly, it allows us to beat back the var Delta variant or any other variants that might be coming or, and, and, and finally, hopefully, put coronavirus behind us. And in the meantime, Secretary, the U.S. unemployment rate fell to 4.8 percent. So, so there is some good news there. But I wanted to go ahead and point out some of the disparities in those numbers because women and people of color are being hit the hardest here. And I know as mayor of Boston, you've always really pushed for fairness and equality in the labor market. So how do we fix this? There's no question about it, but, but I will say this. The number of unemployed women in this country is 4.2 percent. That's a good number, uh, and that's a good number. We're starting to see a downtrend in that, which means more and more women are getting back into the workforce. And, and for black women, that, that the number of unemployed black women is at 7.3 percent, which is not a great number, but it's a better number than it was last month. So we're seeing more and more participation. But we have to be really intentional. When you think about how do we get more women and people of color into the workforce, historically, uh, particularly people of color, uh, and particularly black people, that number has been almost double, consistently double that of white unemployment across this country. Uh, and, and in the Build Back Better agenda that the president is working on, we're all working on right now, in the infrastructure bill, uh, we have some equity proposals built into that uh, as far as job training so, so that this recovery and these investments are equitable, not like the past. So we have work to do longer term, but I think that, you know, the, the pandemic has highlighted, uh, obviously, the, 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 the glowing disparities that, that, that w communities of color have faced for a long time and also women. Yeah, so clearly the, uh, the, 
supply chain issues have continued to disrupt the country's economy in terms of growth. But I'm, I'm always curious about this strange dynamic with the 11 million open jobs in this country. How do you account for that after the extra unemployment checks have run out? Pandemic. I mean, it's the bottom line. It's the pandemic. It, it's, you know, I think we're living in unprecedented times. Uh, we're living in these times. That, you know, I was talking to uh, a doctor from Mass General Hospital the other night, and he was telling me that some of the nurses, nurses in Mass General who uh, worked there for a long time, they just said, it's, t it's time for me to change my career. And they have, obviously, direct connections to, 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 to COVID. They've gone through a very difficult time this last year and a half. People working in industries that are saying, listen, my work-life balance isn't what I need it to be. Uh, so th there's definitely going to be some adjustments when it comes to careers here in this country, and, and not just here in this country, around the globe. It's happening in other countries around the world. So uh, we just need to continue to, 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 to make investments. We need to continue to, to work with companies. We need to continue to work with workers to get, get our economy continue to move forward. And at the end of the day, it's about a pandemic. Uh, and, and this pandemic has, has really created lots of challenges and problems for people uh, in this country, in this world. You know, as mayor of Boston, you created 140,000 jobs. You raised the minimum wage to $15 an hour. I mean, let's get real for a second. Dave was just saying 10 and a half, 11 million jobs are out there. They're open right now. What can you say about the federal minimum wage right now? Well, I, mean, I think before we go there, yeah, I think that when you talked about what I, we did in Boston, you know, it was a collective team that did it, and we were really focused and intentional on making sure that we're bringing new industry to our city and building buildings and, and, and moving our city forward. Mayors and, and, and governors, we need to continue to do the same thing. They, they have a stake in this as well. We need to do everything we can to make sure that we're creating pathways into these jobs around the country. So I think that that's important. The second piece, uh, as far as the minimum wage, you know, there's no question about it that the president supports and I support a $15 an hour minimum wage. We have seen wage growth uh, in this in this in this last few months here, 4.6%, I believe, if I have the number correctly. Uh, but but there's still many Americans in this country working for work seven dollars and 50 cents an hour, eight dollars an hour, and they're not getting by. So, you know, we need to continue. As we think about the, 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 the investment in uh, minimum wage, we're not thinking about it today. It's about the future of our workforce and strengthening the future of our workforce. I want to ask you about the congressional gridlock, uh, the repeated failures of Republicans and Democrats to come together and extend the debt ceiling and fund the government. I know we got a deal last night, Secretary, but we're going to be right back at the same cliff in mid-December. How do we get past this debate? I mean, this is, this is the legislative process. I mean, if, if it's whether it's the halls of Congress or whether it's the, the halls of state houses all across this country, there's a process. People have their opinions and people have their priorities that they want to see happen. And, you know, I feel, I, obviously, I would love to see the bill voted on three months ago and, and, and in law now so we can begin those investments. But I do feel good where it's going. There's lots of conversations happening. That, you know, there hasn't been a breakdown in the conversations, and that's the key piece here. Uh, people are still talking, and they're, they're still uh, working working on what the priorities might be. Certainly, I have my priorities in, in, the, in, the, in the Department of Labor, Workforce Development, job training money. So we, we will see. I think over the course of the next couple of weeks here, hopefully we'll start to see the, this, these two bills move forward. And we want to get them on the president's desk, sign them, and, and let's start making investments in America. Uh, Secretary, yesterday I know that you and Vice President Kamala Harris vice chaired a White House meeting on ways that you can promote worker unionizing, labor rights. What else was discussed in that meeting, uh, and do you expect any sort of executive or legislative action will come out of that? Well, there's going to be a, there's going to be a report on due on October 23rd on the president's desk, and then we'll be making some announcements. It's still a very fluid situation and, and conversations, some good conversations here about worker empowerment. The, the the vice president is very vested in this. It's about creating pathways to the middle class, about strengthening the ability for people to get into the middle class. In some cases, it's about strengthening labor participation and getting more and more people uh, covered by collective bargaining. So uh, I look forward to the report. We're still we're still kicking around some some of the some of the suggestions and. and and the recommendations there and uh, in the next few weeks we'll have a, a final report and we'll get it out to uh, it'll be public and everyone will get a chance to see what it is we go, but it's about Secretary. strengthening workers and, and, and moving moving workers forward you mentioned your time in Boston I too spent years in Boston as a sportscaster I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you Sunday night Tom Brady comes back to Gillette Stadium what was your reaction did you want him to win did you want him to lose and when you saw the Bucks win in Gillette honestly what was your reaction 
<laughs> well, first and foremost, uh, I love Tom Brady and what he did for us. Uh, when, when Tom Brady's not playing the Patriots, I'm cheering for Tom Brady. Uh, on <laughs> Sunday night, uh, when, when, when Nick Folk lined up for that field goal yeah. in the rain, 56 yards, I was praying that it would have went eight inches further to the right uh, and that we would have walked off the field. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. But uh, I'm a Patriots fan all the way, but I do cheer for Tom Brady. Well, you need, well, he's not playing us. You need your Red Sox to get into action because they struggled a bit last night as well. So, you know, they'll have to yeah, get tough, back in that series. Tough game last night. Tough yep. game last night. <laughs> All right, Labor Secretary Marty Walsh, great Thank pleasure you. having you on Morning Rush. Appreciate the time.